Hi, everyone. Oh, my gosh. This is so incredibly exciting and amazing. Um, to be honest, one of my favorite moments about attending the Leadership Summit is that moment right before I go on stage. And usually my heart is racing and I'm sweating because <laughs> I'm a big sweater. But then I walk out there and I see everyone's faces. And that moment is my actual favorite moment because when I look out and I see that sea of faces, not only do I see you, like really see you, I also see myself and I see our collective future and I just feel so much hope. And I wanna say that despite the fact that I don't get to see you and we don't get to be together in that way this year, I still feel that hope today more than ever. As Rocio was saying, the first leadership summit was in a basement and I was there and there were probably 80 girls there. And I remember the highlight moment was when we got to Skype with Oprah's school in Kenya. And the girls, I mean, it was, I can't remember if the room was cold or hot, but it was uncomfortable and it was dark and we were having technical issues. And through that, I kept hearing the girls say, Mum Oprah, that's how they would refer to her. And I thought, wow, what a blessing and a privilege my life is that I, in this dark room, can speak to girls all the way on the other side of the world and to share this moment. And how did I get so blessed to be able to see what this was going to become even then? <laughs> we had no idea that a few years later, I would get to cross the finish line at the LA Marathon on Team Girl Up, having literally never run that many miles in my life. Or we couldn't have known that Melissa and Rocio and I would travel to Ethiopia together to visit Girl Up programs in refugee camps and collect stories and memories that will last us a lifetime. I had no idea that I was going to be betrayed and stolen from by one of my closest friends in the same year that I was gonna garner a daytime Emmy nomination for the original series that I spoke about when I walked off the stage at the Girl Up Leadership Summit two years ago. To say that these past 10 years have been remarkable would be an understatement. There's a quote that I heard recently that says, we overestimate what we can do in a year and yet we underestimate what we can do in 10. And I just want you to take one moment to reflect on that. Think about how old you are right now and then think about how old you were 10 years ago. Like actually picture yourself, picture yourself in an outfit, in a moment, picture how you sounded, how you stood, who you were. Now, if you wanna scare yourself, picture yourself 10 years from now. <laughs> no, don't do that. In this moment, did you think that this is where you would be? Of course you didn't, how could you? The same way that Melissa couldn't have known that she was gonna get married and become a mom of two. And Anna didn't know the impact that we were, were going to make and that she was not going to continue to be within the walls of Girl Up on this day. And the same way that Rocio and Morgan had no idea that they were gonna go from being teen leaders to full-time leaders within the Girl Up organization. Girl Up Elsa Sores had no idea that when they proposed a bill to expand access to menstrual hygiene products in the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, that they would find a state level representative that would put the bill to voting and it would become a law. That their advocacy efforts would inspire a movement and clubs in seven other Brazilian states are currently working together to pass similar bills. Girl Up Arab World built and expanded the coalition to encompass 11 Arab countries from Lebanon to Jordan and Syria and Palestine and Saudi Arabia, UAE, Oman, Qatar, Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco. And that's just in one year. Imagine, imagine what they're going to be able to accomplish in 10 years. Over the past decade, Girl Up has grown its movement into a global powerhouse, training 65,000 young leaders. Take that in, 65,000 young leaders and more than a million online supporters. That is 3,600 plus Girl Up clubs. That is 23 coalitions represented in 124 countries. 
If this does not show us that youth are rising to the challenge of global crises and demanding change, I have no idea what is. But I will tell you the one thing that I find more interesting than what we've accomplished. It's who we have become. Because over the years, I have watched girls gain confidence, find their voices, and become leaders that they did not know they could be. I've seen them face giants, face their fears, and most importantly, come face to face with their infinite potential. And I know that. I know that firsthand because I'm one of those girls. I have been hurt a lot in my life. And I have overcome things that I have to save to put in my book. <laughs> and I've spent most of my life feeling like I was overlooked. And like I wanted to belong. And so I just have to say that in this moment, when we're recognizing 10 years of efforts and 10 years of service, when Girl Up could have called anyone and I do literally, in this moment, actually mean anyone. I mean, Michelle Obama, <laughs> come on. <laughs> the fact that you chose me means more than I will ever, ever be able to express. And so my message to you this year, in our 10th year, my message for all of you girls out there, please don't wait to be chosen. Choose yourself, choose yourself. Break down every wall that people try to build up. Break down every wall that you have around yourself that tells you who and what you can be and build a bridge to your destiny. You don't have to fake it until you make it, ever. You just need to cast a vision that is so big that it takes you your entire lifetime to catch up to it. Everyone doesn't need to know your every move. We need to spend more time investigating and educating and less time designing our next social media post. Social media is an amazing tool, but I'm telling you, I'm watching it happen. It can so easily become a weapon if we don't use it consciously. I beg of you, use it consciously and avoid comparing yourself to anybody else that's on your journey because you don't know who you're going to be. And I have to say this, I said this the first year, you are enough. You are so enough. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know what the next step is. And you certainly don't have to have money because money is not the only currency. Time, like money, flows in the direction of what you value. So use your buying power and your energy in ways that empower. Make choices with the person who made your clothes, who, who grew your food, who assembled your technology. Make choices with those people in mind. Be kind. Be yourself. Ask for what you want. Take up space. Marianne Williamson says our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And I'm telling you, you are powerful. And the test of that power is what you have to go through to uncover that strength. Pain is our greatest teacher. So I beg of you, let yourself feel every single one of your feelings, especially the ones that scare you. And allow yourself to feel your own personal pain and your bumps in the road. I know as an advocate and as an activist, sometimes we get so swept up in what's happening in the world that we neglect ourselves. But by acknowledging your problems, you are not dishonoring the movements that you are a part of. You are honoring the person that you need to be in order to solve those problems. And Storm Reid earlier today, she said, she talked about making mistakes. And I wanna say, Guys, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You will, you must, and you will fail, and you will fail often, but you will fail forward. And please always remember that direction is more important than speed. Grit. Grit will get you further than playing safe. But grace, grace will take you places that grit never will. So with that, I feel like we should end like we began. So I wanna share a quote from the queen 
Michelle Obama. She says in her book, Becoming, it's not about being perfect. It's not about where you get yourself in the end. There's power in allowing yourself to be known and heard in owning your unique story, in using your authentic voice. And there's grace in being willing to know and hear others. This, for me, is how we become. And for all of you, every girl and every man and every leader and all of you out there, all of you girls that I've spent this last decade with, who have supported me and who I've supported, I am who I am because of who you are. You inspire me, you encourage me, you ground me, and you give me hope for a future that you are going to build. From the bottom of my heart, I am so grateful to be a Girl Up Girl. And I can't wait to see what this generation accomplishes. Thank you.